Do you know what's better than fall? That would be a Dollar Tree fall mystery box. And I hear something rattling in here. I cannot wait. I was lucky enough because I received my box from Kelly Barlow from Car Kelly Barlow Creations. And I am so excited. This is actually the second box I've received from her. Her first box has to be one of the most thoughtful boxes I have ever received. And I cannot wait to see what is in this one. Now for the person I sent mine to, I got really lucky this time and I got to send it to the leader of the pack herself, Courtney from Creative on the Cheap. Yep. And if you know what it's like to send Courtney a box, let me just tell you, I had a lot of fun getting those items together and you do not want to miss her video. The entire playlist for all of this is going to be linked in the description box. So as soon as you're done with this video, hop into that playlist and go see Courtney's. Now let's see what Kelly sent me. Oh my goodness, how cute is this? A little something for you. I love, love car caramels, caramels. How do you say it? Anyway, I'm so excited about these. And then look, Jennifer, I hope that the contents of this mystery box brings you some fun inspiration. I can't wait to see the creative touch that you put on these items and what you come up with. I have no doubt that you will create something spectacular. More than that, I hope you have fun. Oh, you know I'm going to have some fun. Happy crafting, my DIY friend. Hugs, Kelly. Seriously, she is so sweet. And her card is so cute. I love that she uses her Cricut. So something else you need to know about the box is that it includes two mystery items that we must craft with. There is also a twist and this twist, we have to use some cardboard to create something. It doesn't have to be a part of any other project, but at some point in this video, you will see me using cardboard to create something. I still just don't know what it's gonna be. So right on top here, we have a couple of floral picks. This would be little pomegranates and this one, is that like, mums mini metallic i was like why are they glittery because they're metallic mums i can always do things with picks oh look at these cute little burlap flowers that is really sweet comes with a pack of four i have not seen this look at this it is a little foam frame i have not seen this but i have a really fun idea for this i'm excited Alrighty, one of my favorite things would be all things wood and how cute are these little pumpkins? I love these. There are so many different things that you can do with them and I like that she sent me two different shapes. I have not seen these. These are so cute. They're metal leaves. Look at that. Oh, I like those. They're so pretty. I actually like the color. A little iridescent. Okay. I want to leave them. I don't know. I don't want it to... Sometimes decorating things is hard. Here we have a little mini bell of hay. I have picked these up before and still have never done anything with these. So I'm gonna need some inspiration. I'm so excited. This made it all in one piece. It's a little glass trivet. Do they call it? No, it's a cutting board. That's not a trivet. It's a cutting board. I always thought it was a trivet now. It's a cutting board, a glass cutting board. Huh, okay. Easy to do things with glass. I will definitely have something. Oh, look how cute this fabric is. I have not seen this one either. Oh, look at this. Oh, ah, tape, get off, get off. Sticky stuff everywhere. Look at that, upside down. Look at that, isn't that sweet? That. That's cute. Alrighty, so here we have one of the wood frames with a tin board in the center. Definitely something fun I can do with this. What is in there? Did it break? Oh no, that's what was rattling. Oh, she sent me salt and pepper shakers and um, it didn't make it. Hey. Challenge item number one. Look how cute this paper is. Oh, no, 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 no. She sent me their decorative bones, their foam bones. I can. Looks like we're gonna have a fall Halloween box here. Okay, it feels like utensils. I kind of hope that they are. 
Actually, I hope that if they are, they're wood. Please don't please be wood. Please don't please be wood. Yes! Wood! With a rubber handle? I didn't know they had rubber handle ones. Maybe I need to get to the kitchen aisle, aisle more often. Ah! Okay. Might be my favorite thing from the whole box, just so you know. I have some ideas for this. I am actually super excited and I cannot wait. Let's get crafting. I absolutely love these leaves. I think they are gorgeous, but the texture is getting lost on them. So to start off with, I'm painting them. This is DIY paint in Apothecary. Now, if you're interested in this paint, you can go to DIYpaint.co and you can find a retailer that is local to you. But of course you can always use with just whatever paint you already have on hand. Simply you want to coat this so that you have a really good solid base. So it actually took me three coats so that I didn't have any of that shimmery metal shining through. Because I'm using a clay base paint, I'm going in with just a damp rag and I'm rubbing away at the paint to bring back that metallic that was underneath to bring back that texture that was there. I really love the combination of that original color as well with this apothecary. It is gorgeous. Now, if you're not using a paint that is activated with water, you can also sand it. Just make sure you use a really fine grit sandpaper. Or if you want to go in when the paint is not quite completely dry, it's still kind of cool to the touch and then you'll be able to wipe away some of that paint and come back to that original color as well. So here I'm going in with a clear wax to seal these. Now it does absolutely deepen up the color as you can see from the leaf that is on the left side. If you don't want to do that, you can leave this and after it cures completely, this paint's not going anywhere unless you get these wet. Now, once you have the wax on, you do wanna wipe off any of the extra. Now I did wanna lighten these up just a little bit so I have a brush with a little bit of white wax on it and I'm just brushing that on here as well. And then again, of course, I'm wiping back the extra so it doesn't stay and that lightened it just ever so much. By using the clear wax before the white wax, the clear wax acts like a barrier so that you don't get such a stark difference with that white wax. I love using this, it's a great hack. Now for styling these, you have so many different options. Here, I've put it on a tray. I just really love that metal with that blue green color. I think it is gorgeous, a nice little accent to put on a tray. But I also have this banner that I picked up at Hobby Lobby like three or four years ago. I've had it forever and the leaves were the perfect update. I love combining the different metals, the metal from the leaf as well as the metal from the words. It's just stunning. I knew right away what I wanted to do with this glass cutting board. All I needed to do is grab a candlestick holder. I picked this one up from Dollar Tree. You can grab this one or whichever one you want. Any candlestick holder will do. Add some adhesive right on that rim because that's the part that is raised up. I'm using Gorilla Construction Adhesive, just dabbing it around that edge. Once you have that on there, you combine the two pieces and you let it set up. You wanna give it at least a couple of hours, but a lot of times I just leave it overnight and come back to it the next day. I took it out to my spray tent and I'm spray painting it with Rust-Oleum's and Heirloom. It is a gorgeous, creamy white, perfect for fall. I love when something so simple and easy can make such a great impact in your decorating. And again, is that Heirloom not just a beautiful color to use for fall? I'm gonna be honest, normally I would not grab a foam frame, but I love the design of this frame and knew that we could make it look more high end. So here I have some salt wash. It's an additive that will thicken up your paint. So I'm mixing up a little bit of green with some black paint just to darken it up. These are both paints by Waverly. Once I have the color that I want, I add in just a little bit of time at that salt wash until I get the thickness that I want. And I'm going for kind of like a soft served ice cream mixture. For the first coat, I'm just going in, I'm brushing it on kind of willy-nilly, not too concerned about even which direction my brush strokes are going. I just want full coverage. Now, I also have this 8x10 frame that came from Dollar Tree, and I'm painting it using the exact same technique I wanted them to match. After the first coat, I'm pouncing. Now, I'm really getting some texture. Now, the thicker your consistency of paint, the more texture you're going to get. Here I have two different waxes, both by DIY, one's clear, one's white. I love these waxes because they don't smell and some waxes have a really strong smell. I'm going first in with the white. Now, because I'm using the white first, you're gonna see a strong difference between the original 
and the white. It will lighten it up a ton. Now, I really like this color, but I wanted even more depth and texture. So after I got that white on there, rubbed it back, I'm going in with the clear, and it will act kind of like an eraser and allow you to pull some of that white off. And then you really end up with just a lot of depth between the different shades of green now that you have on the frame. And I did that with both of the frames. Isn't this gorgeous? I love the texture and the different depths of green. You never know that it was a foam board to begin with, but it doesn't have a backing. If you missed it, the twist at the beginning is we needed to use cardboard, so that is what I'm doing now. I cut a larger piecing to be the back and a couple smaller ones to help fill in and hold this print in place. Now, I created these or designed these prints. They are absolutely free to you. They will be linked down in the description box below if you would like to print them out yourself. But look how absolutely beautiful these came out. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I also like to style with like empty frames sometimes with no backing at all. And these colors would just look beautiful as a backdrop by themselves, but I really like these prints and I hope you do too. Now I'm curious, what would you do if you got a piece like this? Would you leave it the way it is? Would you add something to it? I decided I wanna go for a little bit of a practical touch. So here I have two wood pieces that you can grab these in Dollar Tree's craft section and I wanted to attach them together using a little bit of wood glue to do that so that they would be nice and strong. But while they're drying, I went ahead and I stapled them down their spine to add that extra reassurance that they would be super secure. I also have two of these Dollar Tree boxes and crates. Now we don't need the inside of the boxes, so set those aside, use them later for a different project. And you're simply gonna glue these three pieces together. Again, because we're creating something practical for organization, we want this to be really strong. And that's why I'm choosing to use wood glue. You want to use like a wood glue or some sort of construction adhesive. Once the glue has set up and before you paint it, sand it. I started with an 80 grit sandpaper and worked my way up to a 220 so I would have a nice smooth surface to work with. Now it's time to go ahead and paint it whatever color you want. I chose to go in with Waverly's plaster. It's just a really beautiful softer white. It's not like a bright white that's like glaring. Once you've given enough time to dry, then go ahead and glue your boxes onto the bottom of your wood planks. And then now it's time to grab that little framed tin and you are gonna just simply use some hot glue because that frame is plastic. That's the best way to get that on there. And you're gonna glue that right into the center of those planks. Now remember those little flowers that we got from Kelly? Well, when you peel them off, you can keep them with a sticker if you want to, but I decided to peel them away from the sticker, use these little magnets, hot glue those onto the back, and they make the perfect little magnets for our organization. This is great to put on a desk to keep you organized, or you could even mount it to the wall if you have like a little school station. Absolutely love it. And I will try to fix what has been broken. And take this. I love a good wooden utensil, so I want to show you a way that you can decorate it, but still use it for cooking. You're going to start by using a stencil. So this is just a stencil that I had already lying around, but of course you can make a stencil if you have a cutting machine, and then you're going to need some torch paste. Now I am using a brush to put this on so I can be very specific with where it goes, but you want to fill in the entire area of the stencil just like you would if this was being painted on. Give it a couple minutes to dry and then go in with your heat gun, and you are going to now see a burning effect. It does take a few minutes. The longer you stay in the area, the darker it will get, and then you get a beautiful design. Make sure you scrub and wash this afterwards so that it's nice and clean and you get rid of any of that chemical. But then you have yourself a beautiful design that you can do this for like a gift. Think like a hostess gift if you get invited over for a like Thanksgiving meal, but it's still usable. So here I'm gonna show you a really quick and easy way that you can transform these pumpkins. So here I have some orange paint. This is just the orange from Waverly and some salt wash. Again, this is just an additive. It thickens the paint. The more you add, the thicker it is. You can have so much fun with this. I get this on Amazon. This is the really large container, but they do sell one that is a smaller container. And this stuff is gonna last me a very long time. So for the base coat, I'm going in with this orange. First, I like to just brush it on so I get full coverage. And then I go back in and I pounce so that I get a lot of texture. You've seen me do this before. It is one of my favorite things to do to get some beautiful texture. 
Once that is dried, now I'm going in with this lighter color. This is Plaster by Waverly and completely covering up the orange. Now these are not quite completely dry, but I'm taking some water and dampening my cloth a little bit and I'm rubbing back that white to bring back some of that orange. But because they're not completely dry, I'm getting a little bit of paint blending at the same time. And so it's giving it kind of a tangerine color. So now I have cream, orange, and tangerine. So immediately I get a lot more depth and texture. By gluing the two pieces together, that will allow them to stand freely on their own, or you can always style them individually in separate areas. But I think that they are absolutely just beautiful. And again, this is such a quick and easy thing to do, and it really gave them a different look. Whether you like to decorate for Halloween or you have dogs, I have a great DIY for you. Starting with this salt wash, we're gonna mix it with Waverly's color in sandstone. Isn't this a beautiful neutral? And the reason why we're doing this is we do not want those foam bones to look like foam. We wanna give them a more realistic look or at least not look like foam. While you're at it, go ahead and grab one of these wooden canvases from Dollar Tree. It's in the plus section, flip it over and paint it with that exact same mixture. To lighten things up a little bit, you can use some white, or in this case, I'm using a Waverly's plaster and I'm doing some dry brushing. Now, all you wanna do is get some paint on your brush, dab it off as much as you can, and then just go in with a little paint here and there, build it up until you're happy with the color that you get. You're gonna do that to the tray and to the bone as well. The last step is to glue those bones and place them onto the sides of now your tray. Now, I would not, make this tray super heavy and then carry them by those bones, but you can absolutely lift the tray up by the bones. It is nice and secure and it will hold and isn't it darling to display your Halloween decor. Absolutely love, love this, but if you're not into Halloween, of course you can also use it for some of your fun little doggy things. It's just a cute tray all the way around. I would love to know which of these is your favorite. Tell me that in the comments. Don't forget the playlist is in the description box. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.